Hi everybody. It is September 2nd, 2018. So I posted that video last night on the New York Times article, Microwave Weapons are Prime Suspect in Ills of U.S. Embassy Workers. And in this article, they reference the JAMA article, which is Neurological Manifestations Among U.S. Government Personnel Reporting Directional Audible and Sensory Phenomena in Havana, Cuba. These were the U.S. Embassy workers in Cuba, all of them falling ill, many having brain damage, some having lost hearing. The other symptoms that they experienced, I'm going to be reading those symptoms, some of the details, the percentage of those who experience the same symptoms because I know that a lot of you are experiencing these symptoms. I am experiencing these symptoms. It is very maddening when you are subjected to so many assaults that literally destroy your life, your health, the quality of your life. And this is, this is it. This is how you have to live because you are surrounded by so many that don't care. Even among those, they experience symptoms and they don't care. So, this is, this is an environment that has manifested, that is creating so much illness, not just for the human being, but for all life. These artificial frequencies that we have been saturated in for now going on 20, 22, 23 years and the cumulative effect of these frequencies when you can't get away from them eventually it just kills off life just the frequencies alone these are very dangerous frequencies please understand that we, life itself, everything on this planet, is a frequency. We are electromagnetic beings. Our brains operate on electromagnetic frequencies. So when you introduce artificial frequencies into the environment, it throws off the frequencies of all life forms in that environment. And that's exactly what is happening. That is why we see an exponential increase in illness and syndromes and diseases in the, hey, I don't know what you got. Yeah, I'm a doctor, but uh, can't figure out how to diagnose what you got. Well, will you look into electromagnetic sensitivity to this Wi-Fi that you have in your office? No. No, I won't. I won't. And don't tell me. You're just the patient. I'm the doctor. So I don't have to listen to you. And that happens to an awful lot of people. Reported exposure to auditory and sensory phenomena in their homes or hotel rooms the individuals reported a similar constellation of neurological symptoms resembling brain injury. We are all now having our brains damaged due to these frequencies. And you may think that you're absolutely fine because you're not feeling something. You feel fine. No one, no one is spared these frequencies. These frequencies get into every cell in your body. The pulsating frequencies, they pulsate. They affect everything in your body. So if you're not feeling anything now, eventually you will. 
They heard these sounds emanating from a distinct direction. Many of the sonic weapons and microwave weapons, they can aim. They're directional. So the persistent symptoms reported by these individuals, cognitive symptoms, 81%, balance, 71%, visual, 86%, auditory dysfunction, 68%, sleep impairment, 86%. These are persistent symptoms. Persistent meaning that the acute symptoms happen upon hearing the sound, they happen immediately. And some experienced symptoms like that. The persistent symptoms suggests brain damage. How many of you are having persistent symptoms? Uh, sleep impairment, 86%. Headaches, 76%. Objective findings. Now, those were the reported findings, so subjective. Objective, cognitive, 76%. Vestibular, 81%. Op ocular, ocular, the motor, ocular motor, oh God, forget it. Uh, what it is, is um, eye movement abnormalities, 71%. Moderate to severe sensory neural hearing loss was identified in three individuals. And pharmacologic intervention was required for the persistent sleep dysfunction and the headaches. So, you know, th these people could do a study on all of us and find that many of us are suffering the exact same symptoms. 18 of 21 individuals, which was 86%, reported hearing a novel localized sound at the onset of symptoms. Affected individuals described the sounds as directional, intensely loud, and with pure and sustained tonality. How many of us, we hear the constant 24-7 buzzing or humming, however you describe the tinnitus that you experience. I experience it as just a, a constant buzzing that gets louder at times, but then it's the high-pitched tone, a sustained tone for, well, I've heard that tone, and it was just, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, in one ear, and it was the longest tone that I've ever heard. Usually I hear the tone and it's 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Sometimes it comes with a very sharp jab that hurts the ear. But there was a tone, and I could not believe how, loud, how long it, it persisted. Now, I want to say two minutes. Now, that doesn't sound like a very long time, right? Well, for these tones, it is a very long time but it probably was maybe a minute, minute and a half. So, high-pitched sound was reported by 76%, although two noted a low-pitched sound. Words used to describe the sound, buzzing, grinding metal, piercing squeals, humming. Sounds were often associated with pressure like or vibratory sensory stimuli. How many of you have left comments feeling this pressure in your head? It often happens to me. How many of you have experienced feeling a vibration in your body? 
when you think about these Gwen Towers, Gwen Ground Wave Emergency Network, but Ground Wave, the frequencies go through the ground. Very often, I will, oh my god, I'm going to pause you for a second. No, why don't we all share? In Mustang Madness. <laughs> all right. Um, Gwen Towers have littered the landscape of this country. The ultra low frequencies coming out of these Gwen Towers go through the ground. And that is why you can feel the vibration, the floor of your home. And that is why I say to all of those who say, get grounded, walk barefoot on grass and, and, and the ground, you've got to be careful that you are not walking barefoot around a Gwen Tower. And I have personal experience of doing just that getting burned. We are antennas. We, the body, is an antenna. And I've said this before, I've posted videos. There was a military funded research paper uh, on Gwen Towers and the biological effects. And in that paper, it noted the most dangerous position anybody can put themselves in is barefoot close to a Gwen Tower because the frequencies go right through your feet and right through your body and you are pulling those frequencies more intensely towards your body. Now think of this in that paper it also said anybody who is walking towards a car you open that car you put your hand on that car Metal is a conductor of the frequencies. So the second that your hand goes to open your car door, you're pulling those frequencies from the Gwen Tower more intensely, more quickly, rapidly, right into your body. And it said the best protection was thick rubber-soled shoes when you're around the Gwen Tower. Okay. Um, Sounds were often associated with the pressure like or a vibratory sensory stimuli. Sensory stimuli were likened to air baffling, an air baffling inside a moving car with the windows partially rolled down. And I have read comments from subscribers who described essentially that. That's what they were experiencing. The directional phenomena appeared to be localized to a precise area. Okay. One of the reasons why I'm reading this is, get it, they can take these frequencies and aim it precisely in one area, one region, or one individual. That's how precise these weapons are. Five individuals, 24% reported covering their head and or ears, but it did nothing to attenuate the noise that they were hearing. Accurately determining the dose and duration of exposure was difficult since patients, some of them were sleeping and woke up, so they didn't know if it was going on before they woke up, yada, yada, yada. Um, but 20 95% reported immediate onset of neurological symptoms. Immediate. So, my, my hunch, and I, you know, there, there's nothing that I can, you know, there's no evidence that I can, you know, support my hunch with. But I believe that they were hit with sonic weapons, not the microwave weapons, but sonic weapons. And when we, and I've shown you on the National Mosaic, all the ultra low frequencies coming from Gwen Towers or ultra low frequency transmission sites, those are sonic weapons. 
when you think about all of the Gwen Towers, littered. Now, understand this, that Gwen system, the Ground Wave Emergency Network, that was decommissioned, I believe, in the 70s. So they brought on another emergency network. If the Gwen system was decommissioned, why are we seeing an explosion of Gwen Towers all over the country? Because they are using it as a weapon. They use it to modify the weather, and they use it to control the population. Gwen Towers. The other thing that I read in that military-funded study was one Gwen Tower, and the difference between a Gwen Tower and a cell phone tower. You know the cell phone tower, and it has, you know, it's high, and it's got all of these instruments on it, these panels or drum-like instruments. The Gwen Tower is much higher, and, well, now I've seen instruments on the Gwen Tower as well, but the Gwen Tower is just, it looks like a long, high, skinny antenna, but you will see wires coming down to the ground. All these wires coming down in a, in a circular, it's a radius right around the antenna, all these wires. One Gwen Tower. You shoot off frequencies at a certain level. It can kill instantly all life within a 40-mile radius. That's how powerful these things are. They are extraordinary, extraordinarily dangerous weapons. So, the immediate onset of neurological symptoms? Yes. One individual awoke from sleep with acute symptoms. Headache, unilateral ear pain, hearing changes. From days to weeks after exposure, individuals reported that they experienced the onset of additional cognitive, neurobehavioral mood, and physical symptoms. 20 individuals, 95%, reported persistent symptoms. That means they have brain damage. Persistent cognitive manifestations were reported by 81%, 17 individuals. Subjective symptoms include memory problems, feeling mentally foggy, impaired concentration, feeling cognitively slowed, in addition, they reported neurobehavioral difficulties, including irritability, nervousness, feeling more emotional, sadness, and for at least six individuals, a clear change in work performance was noted by uh, supervisors and colleagues. Individuals also reported a good day, bad day pattern where significant cognitive or physical exertion would be followed by exacerbation of their symptoms for several days. Cognitive symptoms as well as disequilibrium and headache reportedly were also frequently exacerbated by cardiovascular exercise. Brain damage. I had a stroke. It was a thalamic stroke. I could no longer run. I used to run. I couldn't run. If I exerted myself too much, I got incredibly dizzy. It still continues. Brain damage is what causes that. Now these frequencies affect the hypothalamus, which is under the thalamus. And the hypothalamus, my God, crucial role and releasing hormones, uh, regulating body temperature. How many of us feel the immediate sensation of our body temperature rising? Uh, it controls thirst, hunger, 
has a role in emotions, sleep. You just affect one, one little tiny portion of the brain. You can throw off every other system operate the brain, the body, the brain. It is just a, a, a magical piece of work. Its operations are just so intricate and so beyond comprehension. But all of its functions work on electromagnetic frequencies. So yeah, you throw off one aspect of your body, it has a ripple effect. And there was great concern over the cognitive impairment in 16 individuals. They experience serious cognitive problems. Um, they Impairments were found in executive function, you know, the higher ordered thinking, motor function, auditory and visual memory, visual spatial perception, visual motor construction, auditory attention, working memory, language, processing speed, reasoning. All individuals demonstrated a high level of effort during testing and had intact cognitive domains including visual working memory and academic, academic achievement. You can so easily bring people down, even just with one attack. Individuals noted apathy, executive dysfunction, disinhibition. Disinhibition. What does that mean? Suddenly, people were feeling less capable of restraining themselves. Their, and, and what the behavior that we are seeing in our fellow Americans, behaving in ways that we and they really, everybody knows, it is wrong. You don't behave this way. You don't say or do this because we know it's wrong. It's immoral. And it's clear, you will hurt other people. And they show an absence of care at all. They, they're, they are unrestrained. So many of the behaviors that we knew were wrong, and if we wanted to do it, we said to ourselves, I, I can't. Well, that I can't, it's just been unleashed, those behaviors. It's kind of like being on psychiatric medications, where suddenly uh, you are behaving in ways that you would not have ordinarily without being on those medications, because you knew it was wrong. Well, there's a, who cares? You know, you, you, there's a apathy that sets in and you are less inhibited. Two individuals met criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder and endorsed several levels of anger, depression, and anxiety. Individuals described acute nausea, nausea, 33%, dizziness, 24% during exposure, which continued to progress in the subacute and persistent stage. More than three months after exposure, individuals reported a higher prevalence of dizziness, 62%, three months after exposure. So, I, I'm going to say this. I was never sensitive to these frequencies I never wanted Wi-Fi. Even in 2009, I didn't even know what Wi-Fi was. I just didn't want it. Cell towers, Gwen towers, Gwen towers that I didn't even know existed in Great Barrington. There I am. I'm walking. I, I knew this woman who owned a coffee shop, and it closed at 5 o'clock, and be 
Behind the coffee shop, they had a fenced-in, beautiful yard along a river. God. And I used to take my dogs there, and they would just run and play. And I would walk around barefoot. And I would come home. My legs would be swollen. And my feet, right up to my ankles, would be burned. And I'd be looking, and it, it's like there was a defined line between the burn and just, you know, the regular uh, color of my skin. And I could not understand it. Well, I did the research. Came across Gwen Towers. And one day, I'm at this coffee shop, and I turn to the right. Now, there was a radio station. There was a bank in between the coffee shop, that backyard where I was walking, a bank, and a radio station. And I turned and I saw this huge cell tower and a Gwen Tower right up against that cell tower. That's why I was getting burned. From that point on, I have become more and more sensitive. And the cumulative effect of these frequencies have really been my downfall. But it was that the intensity of the frequencies that I was receiving from that Gwen Tower walking around barefoot in that backyard, I was shocking my bodies. My, my body, I don't have several body. And um, from uh, persistent, yeah. But we're not completely away from the exposure. Like these individuals, they go into the hospital for the testing. The hospitals are Wi-Fi. So the exposure is continuing. And it continues their symptoms. I believe that's why it's persistent. You get these people complete, well, many of them are permanently. It's kind of like they've been stroked. They were stroked by these frequencies. And that damage is permanent. But for many, you get them completely away from these artificial frequencies and they would recover. There's no recovery today because we are saturated in these frequencies and can't get away. All you can do is just reduce your exposure the best that you can. So, yeah, acute stage. Um, well, many are having the same symptoms three months after. And balance symptoms worsened with eyes closed or low light conditions. Uh, walking quickly. Here, these symptoms were exacerbated. The dizziness and nausea and balance problems, they were exacerbated by walking quickly, tasks involving head movements, complex visual environments, or in some cases, just simply standing still. The eyes closed, low light conditions for some worsened the symptoms. So clinical examinations raised concern for balance impairment in 17 patients. And I'm hearing from more and more having balance problems. I'm having balance problems. Elderly woman just told me yesterday, she showed me her knee. She went flying. She said, I don't know what happened. I lost my balance. Of the individuals with persistent symptoms, 76 reported visual problems. Light sensitivity, difficulty reading uh, were also frequently reported. Light sensitivity in 62%. Difficulty reading, 57%. And they experienced, particularly with reading, headaches, this equilibrium and nausea. The ocular motor dysfunction in 15 individuals was of great concern. 
they had convergence insufficiency, which is a condition in which your eyes are unable to work together. So if you're looking at a nearby object, one eye goes outward when it should be going inward. Um, that means you've got a brain injury. And abnormal smooth pursuits, which is just that your eyes can, can track smoothly while reading or watching a car you know there could be jerking eye movements or abnormal speed in tracking something and the cicadic <laughs> my tracking is gone oh cicadic cicadic dysfunction, which is um, it's the, uh, well, I'm sorry, that was the abnormal speed of eye movement. Okay, I'm getting a little confused between the abnormal smooth pursuits. That is just that your eyes can't track smoothly objects. The cicadic dysfunction is the abnormal speed or jerking eye movements and it, uh, it causes learning problems, reading problems. This is very serious. This is no joke. This is destroying a whole lot of people and their ability to function and their ability to work and their ability to just be healthy. And yeah, you know, you can cause it Oh, she's so angry, or you can cause it. What do you? You can hear it as me being angry or me being passionate. You know, I get different interpretations. My life. When your life has been so affected by all of this, do you just go, oh well, embrace it? I must have manifested it for a reason. I've got to learn something from this. You know, I, I sense that an awful lot of people really don't take life seriously. And I do. Affected individuals reported hearing a loud sound associated with ear pain, tinnitus. Within days to weeks following exposure, individuals continued to report tinnitus and ear pain with the addition of a change in hearing, sensitivity to noise. 24% uh, developed a sensitivity to noise. More than three months after exposure, sound sensitivity was the most common auditory concern, followed by tinnitus and ear pressure. Everything that we are experiencing, guys, it's right here. Nine individuals reported persistent hearing reduction, pure tone, autometry, autometry, I don't know, uh, including pure tone average, and word identification revealed moderate to severe sensory neural hearing loss. So many were reporting sleep problems, reduced sleep duration, difficulty falling asleep, significant daytime fatigue. Eight individuals reported immediate onset of headache, intense head pressure. Photophobia, light sensitivity, phonophobia, noise sensitivity, were persistent. So yeah, they're screwing with our biological processes. So, yeah, many had mild traumatic brain injury causing widespread brain network dysfunction. Difficulty remembering, feeling cognitively slowed. God, how, all, how many of you feel that? I do. Cognitive 
difficulties interfered with these patients' ability to multitask, process information quickly, with accurate recall, solve problems, perform rapid decision making. So why did I read all of that? Why do I sometimes sound redundant? Why do I spend the time doing this? Because it is important and really serious. And for all of you experiencing these symptoms and you get judged by those around you, those who are not believing you, it's right here. You may as well be one of these individuals who were a U.S. Embassy worker in Cuba, having been a victim of sonic attacks. Oh, but we are victims of sonic attacks, which I have shown you over and over on the National Mosaic. These ultra-low frequencies in the sonic range attacking all of us all over the country. And it's not just the sonic in the sonic range. It's also microwave frequencies that are causing so many people to decline. And do I... I'll just post another video going through a lot of the research because I don't know what to do anymore. And I am definitely declining, and I can't stop what I'm doing because it's, uh, look, there are some of us who are absolutely, there's something inside, you're compelled to put out this information. Yeah, a lot of the information, it's the same information, but you know what? Until people get it, you just have to keep doing it. Microwave frequency electromagnetic fields produce widespread neuropsychiatric effects, including depression. And you can pause the video and read, you know, what I've highlighted. Um, scientific evidence contradicts findings and assumptions of Canadian safety panel. Microwaves act through voltage-gated calcium channel activation to induce biological impacts at non-thermal levels, supporting a paradigm shift for microwave lower frequency electromagnetic field action. Frequency effects the pulsing of these microwaves. Remove calcium. Pulses are more effective than smooth sine waves because their rapid rise and fall times catapult the ions quickly away from the membrane and leave it even more time for them to be replaced by different ions before the field reverses. Pulse radiation from mobile phones can be particularly, particularly damaging. Electromagnetic fields have effects at the cell level. Our bodies make good antennas. U.S. electromagnetic weapons and human rights. Awful lot of information. 48 pages of facts and evidence and references. Millimeter waves, 5G, readily absorb, absorbed by the atmosphere and by the eyes and skin of living organisms. First quarter of 2017, the U.S. population was being irradiated primarily by the following pulsed microwave radiation. Get ready for the 5G, which is only going to increase the danger. Hypothalamus, right here. And guess what? These frequencies target not just the hypothalamus, but when they target the hypothalamus, wow, well, you get a lot of dysregulation, biological dysregulation. The statement by the advisors to the International Electromagnetic Frequency Scientist appeal on the U.S. National Toxicology Program that reports cell phones cause cancer. Even when we have information put out, oh yes, by the scientists, $25 million study executed by the U.S. government, those scientists came out cell phones cause cancer. Crickets is what you hear. Crickets. Nobody cares. 
scientific evidence to cause concern among independent scientists and the new infrastructure of 5G. What the hell are we doing? What the hell are we doing? You know, it's so many experts have said, this is urgent. There is an urgent need to evaluate 5G health effects now before millions are exposed. We'll see an increase in melanoma, skin cancers. Microwave radiation can have different properties depending on its wave life, shorter waves, wavelength. Shorter waves, called millimeter waves, reflect off buildings and deposit mainly into your eyes and skin. Cataracts. It, there'll be an explosion of cataracts. Could a sonic weapon make your head explode? Yes. We need to start asking some hard questions, scientists have said. Chronic disease in the Western world, increasing incidence or increasing overdiagnose. Wow. Yeah. Patients with chronic conditions now account for most consultations in primary care. In the developed world, number of people with chronic conditions is rising faster. We need to start asking some hard questions, right? About our environment. Birds, insects, butterflies, trees, everything dying. Doctor from Germany, um, Klinghart, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name. I personally suspect that the exposure to electromagnetic fields in the home and the microwaves from cell phone radiation are driving the virulence, virulence of many of the microbes that are naturally in us, making them more aggressive and illness producing. Yes, we know that Lyme spirochetes were around for a long time, but something happened. More aggressive, more penetrating, more illness producing. World Health Organization setting the standard for a wireless world of harm. World Health Organization must reverse this destructive course. It's failing to protect its global citizens from this pervasive pollutant in four key ways. Industry infiltration, intentional ignorance, denial of the science, disregard for humanity. And these aren't just, you know, ordinary people like me, you know, authoring these articles. These, this is a ex-World Health Organization employee, scientist. Chronic exposure to extremely low frequency fields may induce depression. Magnetic fields and penal function in humans. Evaluation of nocturnal acute exposure to extremely low frequency magnetic fields on your melatonin. Your melatonin and circadian rhythm, rhythms. Well, guess what? Why do we see these extremely low frequencies shooting off at night all over the country with an intensity that I certainly have never seen before? They're affecting our sleep purposefully to make us sick, to make us depressed, to make us fatigued so that we can't fight this new world order, you know, the, the reshaping of the world into, into a, a, a tyranny that huh, you can't even imagine how dark this tyranny will be. Static and extremely low frequency electromagnetic field exposure reported effects on the circadian production of melatonin. Enhanced ultra-low frequency radiation observed by a meter uh, two months around the strong 2010 Haiti earthquake. Well, get that. These ultra-low frequencies were observed two months around the strong 
Haiti earthquake. Do you get what that says? It says that these ultra low frequencies were acting upon a certain region on this planet and Haiti then was devastated by an earthquake. Before and after the earthquake. So when we see all of these ultra low frequencies, the consistency with which we're seeing these ultra low frequencies being set off in California over and over again, ultra low frequencies going through the ground, their vibration, an earthquake comes, you can guarantee it was brought about, not naturally. Extremely low frequencies and Alzheimer's. Disturbing effects of low frequency sound emissions and vibrations in residential buildings. Silent sound, infrasound, sonic weapons can make you physically ill. Air ringing, dizziness, palpitation, autonomic imbalance. Applied as a weapon of war. Destroys melt calcium in the body. All of this information out there, all of the studies done on these sonic weapons and these people who were doing all the testing of these Cuban U.S. Embassy workers, geez, I don't know what it is. God, could be microwave, could be, well, we're going to rule out sonic. It could be contagious anxiety. Are you kidding? Sonic weapons. We don't consciously hear it. It doesn't mean that we don't respond to it. It induces feelings of fear, dread, even depression, inexplicable effects, headaches, nausea, night ter terrors, sleep disorders, resonates with the human eyes, causing them to vibrate, vertigo, distorted vision, and visual hallucinations, microwave syndrome or electro hypersensitivity, historical background just as dangerous as these ultra-low frequencies. Here, evidence of behavioral influence, remote behavioral influence, technology evidence, microwave hearing. God, there's so much, so much evidence. This taken from a uh, Navy-funded research on the effects of electromagnetic frequencies, biological effects, radio wave disease. This was back in the 70s. They know, they know what they are doing. They know what causes these symptoms. And we just have to live it. No, I'm sorry. This was from the Defense Intelligence Agency. Biological effects of electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, and microwaves. Pulsed microwaves. Extremely low frequency electromagnetic fields disrupt magnetic alignment of ruminants. Resting and grazing cattle and deer tend to align their body axis axis is in the geometric north-south direction. Extremely low frequency magnetic fields generated by high voltage power lines disrupt alignment of the bodies of these animals with the geomag geomag magnetic field. Body orientation of cattle and roe deer was random on pastures under or near power lines. 
They exhibited distinct patterns of alignment, disturbing effect of the extremely low frequency microwave frequencies on body alignment diminished with the distance from conductors. They operate to affect the cellular and molecular biological levels. Um, they can control behavior. A literature review, Childhood Leukemia, has been the most consistently outcome associated with magnetic field exposure. Hey, but who cares about the children? <sighs> I get to carry around my cell phone and download movies and I can do anything I want wherever I want. Fun, fun, fun. Extremely low frequency mind control technologies, the impact that they have on you. Yeah, and the impact is very serious. Yeah, my videos are long. And I wish that I were someone who was just not as detailed as I am. But I am. So, if you don't like long, long videos, don't watch my videos. This is extremely dangerous. This is no joke. And I am not here so that people love me and I get you know, hundreds of thousands of views and I have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and I don't even look at the numbers I hardly even go to my home page I don't care we are dying this is war it is war this is no joke this is no joke so you want to tell people how they should be operating their channel. You want to tell people what they need to be focusing on. You want to tell people how long their videos should be. I have to tell you, you've got issues with control. Work on them. We are at war. We are going down. Many of us, our the, the, what we experience physically and cognitively, we are declining. I am. I'm doing my absolute best. And I have to continue to do my absolute best for me so that I know it. So that when I finally go out, I know I have done my absolute best. If it's a long video, too bad. Yeah, I've gotten comments from people. We'd love to listen to you, but 40 minutes is way too long. Can't you just do the facts in the beginning and then do all of your chatter at the end? Your chit chat? It's chit chat? Really? What, what portion of my videos are chit chat? When I say take action, when I say we've got to get this information out, when I say we're at war, get it through your minds. Get out of your normalcy bias. Please get out of your normalcy bias. Is that chit-chat? Tired of the comfortable. Telling everybody how they should be living. And get comfortable yourself in your discomfort. Just pretend that you are okay. Because... It, it's easier for me to listen to. Well, we're not okay. And many people are not okay. And you want to judge me? Go ahead. But I do want to speak for all of those who are afraid to say how they are feeling for fear of being judged in our fabulous American society filled with Americans who are so caring and so compassionate. No. Most are cruel, don't give a shit about anything, and many people are suffering the consequences of those Americans who live a complete and utter lie, and I'm tired of it, and many people are tired of it. So, 
I'm going to speak for them. You know, I get comments from people and I think to myself, oh my God, I would never, I, I well, I don't even think to put the comment down telling somebody how they should be sounding, how long their video should be, what subjects they should be covering. What the hell is wrong with people? We have serious problems here. These frequencies are affecting everybody's voltage-gated ion channels. Yeah, a new paradigm. The physical, biological, and health effects of radio frequency microwave radiation. Dr. Neil Cherry. And check out his site because he has an awful lot of studies. Now we've got thousands upon thousands of studies that have shown these microwave frequencies are incredibly dangerous. The effects, the biological effects, are so numerous. And then we have these people who claim the, the studies funded by the telecommunications industry, that's what they are citing. Those studies funded by the telecommunications industry, when all of the independent studies show how dangerous these frequencies are. The implications of nonlinear biological oscillations on human electrophysiology for electro hypersensitivity and multiple chemical sensitivity. There's a connection. There is a connection. Circadian and other temporal biological rhythms depend on these fluctuating electromagnetic inputs to direct gene expression, cell communication, metabolism, neural development, brain wave activity, neural synchro um, <laughs> my brain. Wow. That my brain is just not putting together how to pronounce that word. Synchrony. A diversity of immune functions, sleep wake cycles, behavior, and cognition. Also want to say this. My appetite, my hunger, has really greatly changed. Now it's again, I have to say this. It's very hard for me to really pinpoint what uh, changes that I am experiencing, what are the causes? Because I have lived a very different life and it has been very painful and stressful. So when you live that kind of life, it does affect an awful lot of your biological rhythm. But, but I will say that everything really began to change when I was when I became electrically uh, um, hypersensitive to the electromagnetic frequencies in Great Barrington, I noticed that I was like never hungry. And I thought that was odd. So when these frequencies are affecting our hypothalamus, and our hypothalamus it actually plays a crucial role in hunger, thirst, and all that, they can actually target people and turn them anorexic or obese. No joke. So this is the environment that we are living in, guys, and it's really I understand that people want to watch a five minute video and then just go on to another subject. Ah, well, then think about your 
ability to maintain your attention, these frequencies disrupt our attention span. Now, I'm not saying that one should always, you know, if there were frequencies, everybody would be like, wow, wow, I can spend an hour on never lose truth. No, I'm not saying that. And frankly, I don't think my videos are very good. I just put out the information. And I do do an awful lot of commentary. And too bad for those who don't like it. Um, but we've got to give up this oh, I'm, I'm, you know, using YouTube as entertainment. You know, I want a five-minute video, give me the information, then I'm going to go off to another subject, give me the information, oh, another subject, give me the information, okay, 15 minutes, I'm well-informed, and then I go out and live my life with my normalcy bias, and I do nothing with the information. That's got to change, guys. It's got to change. Now, Oh, there's so many. <clears throat> Nothing's going to change this. Or all of those who believe everything's prophesied and Jesus is coming back next year. Things have to be fulfilled for Jesus to come back. And so, hey, I'm so happy that Jesus is coming back. So I'm just going to sit back, watch all of this destruction and not really feel much about it. Not do anything because Jesus is going to come back and he's going to make everything good. He's going to turn the bad people good. Okay, well, uh, I wish Jesus would have shown up a long time ago. Hell, I wish he would have turned up uh, 60 years ago and made my mother good. So I could have had a better life. Okay, you want to maintain your delusions about that? Fine, go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus coming back next year, it's irrelevant to what you do today. Those who believe, oh, well, I'm going to be out of here and nothing can change this. Every action that you take on a daily basis has a ripple effect. And you know what? It goes into the future. <clears throat> so one of the reasons why I do my best every single day regardless of, you know, how that best is declining. And yeah, I get a lot of comments and they criticize and, and judge. And well, I, I don't care. I have to do for my own soul everything I can. And that I'm going to be out of here soon, does it matter? No, because everything that I do before I'm out of here has a ripple effect on what's taking place when I'm out of here. So let's say you educate somebody and you wake somebody up and they're actually someone who can take action. Wow, okay, I'm out of here. But that person carries it on, carries on. Yeah, a lot of people, I don't care. I'm dead anyway. I don't care what happens. Well, I do. I don't know why I do. I just do. And that's why all of this is really important. Every action that you take, how you live, is really important. It's important for you, your spiritual development, your own soul, regardless of the result. And I don't understand why people can't see this. All of the links, it, well, I'm not going to be linking to all of this. I can't because this is old research <coughs> that I did. You can get, you know, if you want to look into these studies, look into the papers, then get the title of the paper, put it in the search bar, and you'll get it. For all of you who are experiencing all of these symptoms, and they're persistent, and they have affected the quality of your life, I am so sorry, because I know what you're experiencing. I don't know the details, but generally speaking, I know what it feels like to have your life. It, it, it feels like, you know, you just have... You still have that brain that says, I... I should be able to, I, I want to do, 
I know I can do, but there's like a force that is just keeping you down with all of the symptoms that you have. And it does make for, you know, a very frustrating life. You're just frustrated. I identify, I know what you're feeling, and I'm so sorry. It's, uh, and for all of those people, you know, well, if they just detoxed, and if they just did this, and if they just bought these clothing, and if they just did, you know, they, they painted the walls with their, you know, the lead paint, and if they just did, well, they'd be feeling fine. Doesn't work that way. Does not work that way. Every individual is different. And we have to stop the judgment of one another. And start recognizing that our own experience in life is not everybody's experience. Ciao, guys.